<laughs> now, I want to start this with, uh, by asking you a question. What's up? Because I asked my coworkers this today, actually. Would you get a sugar daddy that will let you live your life comfortably, not like extravagant, mm -hmm. you know, all your bills are paid, you got everything you need, and every once in a while you get something, you know, pretty pricey, like a gift or something. Okay. Let's say a uh, $1,000 max on the gifts. Okay. But he gets you a car, not a brand new car, just a used car, very sensible. Mm-hmm. Would you have to give him one solid kiss every day? One solid kiss? Like, not like a little, no, you got to like go in. Oh, you got to give him like a love, mm -hmm. like, a, like a I love you kiss. Yeah. Like Damn. you suck on his bottom lip a little. Oof. Once, a, once every day. Yeah. Mm. And he's, and he's not going to be subtle about it. Like, he's not going to be like, Hey, we'll go do it in the other room. He's like, no, Hey, we're in the middle of Walmart. Uh, well, is he at during least, black Friday? Is he at least handsome? What? He's just a sugar daddy. Uh, you Whatever you, you think you can pull in. Oh, damn. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. But all your bills are paid. You it's got a like, car, a like, reliable car. Like, I'm not homophobic in any sense of the way, no. but I am still vain. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be handsome to catch this. <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> but would you? Uh, like I said, if I could pull like a hot, like a fucking smoke show, I could fucking, I could pull yeah. off being a gay dude. No, no, but, you're not gay. I know. He's just your sugar daddy. Oh, yeah, and, I, and that's what I'm saying. But yeah. I'm just saying, if you're going to be with a man publicly doing, like, gay shit, you might as well fucking play the part a little bit. Yeah. I'm for the I'm for the arts, man. <laughs> what do you think, Theo? <laughs> uh, what's up, everybody? Uh, the Night Funk back at it. Asking the real questions. Yeah. As we're getting down to the nitty gritty of what men will do for the sake of money. For no, not even for money. It's the sake to be comfortable in life. I guess that is true. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, I mean, it it's, sucks because you'll. But it still involves money. As soon as you age out, though, he'll switch over to someone else. Probably. Yeah. It'll be a good couple of years, though. I mean, I guess as long as you're not getting diddled, I guess, it, like kissing a man on the yeah. lips. Like I've seen, I've seen men do that with their sons, which is a weird thing to say. It is. It's a weird thing yeah. to do, also. I'll never like yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the men who don't show affection to their sons. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I think I'm comfortable with my sexuality. I think I'll do it. Yeah, to live comfortably. Mm. Yeah, but how often do you have to be with that person? Do you just have to be there long enough to give him a kiss? Oh, okay. Yeah. That just seems so, like, like you're living your life, but every now and then he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna take you out." Well, I'm, yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. How often is he taking you out? You said every day, so it's like every day. Are you spending like an hour, two hours with him? Think of it as a like half a, day at work, oh, okay. four or five hours. Oh, okay, so you don't have a job, but he he's he's covering. No, you don't have a job. Oh, well, okay. you can have a job, but you have to spend at least four or five hours with him. I guess I guess that is true. Yeah, uh, I think I could do it. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to get judged super hell by all, like, the non, like, progressive thinking friends that I have, but who cares? Yeah. It, I don't know how many times I have to, like... Have... <laughs> I got six PlayStation 5s. <laughs> I love my friends, don't get me wrong, but anytime I go around and I hit them with these kind of hypotheticals, mm -hmm. I love how quickly they are just be like, no, that's gay. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm like, bro, like, it's okay. It's like, just a dick, bro. <laughs> you, could just say, you could just say no. You don't have to, like, overemphasize your masculinity. Yeah, you don't have to defend yourself. That kind of makes you look more gay. Yeah. That kind of makes you look more suspiciously, like, closeted, you know? Check, check his closet. Check his closet. He's check, probably got one of those, like, uh... It's like those, uh... You've seen them in the videos. It's if like, you got a pair of rainbow suspenders in there, dog, I've already caught you. <laughs> you just like Richard Simmons a lot. Yeah. No, but it's like, uh... It's like a, for the women, it's like a dildo, but it has like the body of a man. <laughs> what? Yeah. Have you ever seen those? Oh, like, I, I think I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's, it's a dildo, but yeah. it's like the body of a man. Yeah, see, I've only ever seen the pocket asses. Have you ever seen those? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those things are funny looking. Yeah. Because uh, um, It looks like it just sucked on a lemon. I remember a friend of mine told me this uh, story one time where he was trying to get a job at a sex shop because he thought it would be a funny job to get in college, you know? Yeah. And, of course, no places would hire him. But it, when, every time that he went to the sex shop, he ended up, like, talking with the staff a little bit and just to see, like, what it's like to work at one. Yeah. And uh, this one girl was talking to him, and uh, uh, she was saying that, like, yeah, you'll get some peculiar people come through one time we had a guy come here just run through the store and he went all the way to the back to where we keep like the pocket asses and he just ran to the counter and he was just like charge the card just charge it and then 
and she was like like hurrying trying to like get the transaction through and he just like grabbed it and he was like uh, he just grabbed the card grabbed the pocket ass ran out and he's like my bad is my birthday and he just left <laughs> like he was saving up his money for his birthday to get this pocket ass and he was about to go home and have a great time wow he's just at home lubed up Do- right. not even lubed not even lubed just like pulling on it yeah yeah she's running after him you forgot the lube <laughs> <laughs> I always thought about getting one just to have it as like a little mouse pad, you know, like the you know how like the mouse pads have like the little oh, uh, cushion right there. I just thought like, what if I just had one right here so I could just rest my wrist on it while I handle the mouse? Hey, every now and here, <laughs> <laughs> I like the video of the guy. He goes to the grocery store and he pulls out a pocket pussy, and he has his money inside of it, <laughs> but it's covered in lube too. He's like squeezing it out, and then he put like fucking lotion in there too. Uh. So it's like dripping out of there. He's like, hold on, it's in there. <laughs> and the and the cashier guy is like, bro, are you fucking serious? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Uh, but yeah. I always thought it would be funny to dress up as like a pink cowboy and then have like a dildo in a pocket pussy and whip it out like a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Reach for the sky. <laughs> But no, um, or have like little, uh, you know, how, like cowboys have the spurs, mm-hmm. and, you know, the, the, the sh- 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 sound when you walk. Mm-hmm. Have little dicks instead of the little spikes. Oh shit! You could always just put like a, a little truck nuts on there too. A little truck nuts on yeah. your boots. Actually, you know, they, they make truck nuts for Crocs. Yeah, I saw them. Yeah. <laughs> no. They make so many things. They make speakers. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lights, so you can walk at night. Mm-hmm. Um, they even have little uh, little cop lights that you can put on. You know, they just made a pair of Croc uh, like cowboy boots. Yes, I saw them. Yeah, yes. look fucking ridiculous. Like Ugh. whenever the Croc like fad came out in high school, I wasn't for it. I just thought they looked ugly, and also yeah. they just seemed like they would be uncomfortable. It wasn't like I didn't buy like my first pair of Crocs until like last year because I got the slides. Or same. I got the well, my uh, parents bought them for me because it was like right after I got diabetes mm-hmm. and my hands and feet. They started. gave you like a like a like a uh, sorry <laughs> like a diabetes care package. Sorry, you got diabetes yeah. gift. <laughs> well, no, it was um they um they met me for like uh breakfast one day. I had a doctor's appointment. I just took the rest of the day off because I was like it was when I first found out, so I was kind of in a slump. And they came just to take me out to eat. Uh, cause that will fix the diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have but, the, uh, I'll have the pancakes. <laughs> but no, um, <laughs> do you want normal syrup or the sugar free <laughs> normal syrup? <laughs> no, 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 normal syrup. <laughs> but uh, she gave me, or they they got me the Crocs, and it's the ones that have the the fuzz inside. Oh, bro, those things are fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah, but I would get, I would, I would think they'd get pretty stinky after a while. I right? wear them only during the winter. I'm about to bust them bitches out. Yeah, but I was also saying, because I used to see people wear those at mm-hmm. school, but they wouldn't wear socks. And I'd be like, It's Ugh. so fucking gross, dude. It's yeah. so gross. I know someone, uh, she, for one, is a disgusting person. <laughs> um, my wife will know who I'm talking about. Oh, for a second, I thought you were going to say your wife. No. <laughs> you no, she doesn't wear Crocs. She, <laughs> she's just ashamed of me for having Crocs. Oh, damn. Uh, and I'm like, buy a pair. <laughs> You'll change your mind. Uh, shout, out to, shout out to all the girls with back pain. Yeah. <laughs> But no, yeah. So, um, God, what the fuck was I saying? <laughs> no, it's he's the. She always wore yellow Crocs. Okay. And just looking at her, you're like, you smell. <laughs> like you don't even have to be near. You're like, we know you smell. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those people where you look at and you're like, you're like those kids, like toddler kids that always have sticky hands. Yeah, that's al- the vibe. They, they always have the um, what's it called? Hey, do you got any games on your phone? No, they have the the Kool Aid mustache. Not, oh yeah, not not the milk mustache, the Kool Aid mustache. Oh yeah, and they always kind of like <sighs> they breathe like that. Yeah. I fucking hated like kids like that, dude. Growing up, we had a few cousins like that. Yeah, we did have a yeah. few. Yeah, they grew up. I don't, didn't we have a cousin at one point that like was still like drinking from a baby bottle when he was like way too fucking old? Yeah, he was in elementary school. Yeah, and he was still like, why? Because his parents were fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to that cousin. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know which cousin that is. I don't fucking remember. There's so much family that I don't remember their names of. Yeah. Uh, is that bad? Is that no, bad? No, because to... there's too many fucking people. I guess that is true. Like, I, I love my family and everything, but we need to stop. <clears throat> like, there's contraceptives. Mm-hmm. Like, pull all game is weak, but, you know, buy condoms. Get a vasectomy. <clears throat> they don't cut your nuts off. They just cut the tube. I think it was, like, last week I went to go hang out with, like, uh, 
my mom. We went to go eat at a restaurant, nice. and it was with my with my grandma and my grandma's sister, because uh, she was in town. Yeah. And um, what I, while I was there, I was I got curious because I was like, I hadn't met this sister, or apparently I did a long time ago. She apparently cut my youngest brother's um, umbilical cord. Oh wow. Yeah. So. Uh, so I was kind of like, okay, but I don't remember who this person was. And then I had asked her, have I met you before? And she was like, last time I saw you was like when you were like five or six years old. So you probably <laughs> don't remember me at all. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And then I had asked grandma, I was like, how many like siblings did you have? And she's like, <laughs> she was like seven. There were seven of us. I was like, and two of them have passed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, being Wait, like, only two have passed? Only two of the past. The rest of them are alive. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ! They're just scattered around like the Infinity Stones, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Two are down, five to go. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Thanos is on his way. Yeah, he's just wearing little old people on his hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Yeah. So once you once they collect the final Dragon Balls, they'll probably get. <laughs> That's they, what they are. They're the Dragon they're Balls. The Dragon Balls. <laughs> oh, dude! Whenever all the last one dies, Shinron shows up. <laughs> yeah. But then they reappear again and scatter to the winds. Yeah. <laughs> But then I was like, wait a minute. So you're, I was like, you and your siblings are, are are seven. And then you yourself had seven children. <coughs> and then I got even more curious. I was just like. And that's only that. I was like, how many? Uh, then I was like, mom, I was like, <laughs> I had asked grandma. I was like, how many brothers did our great grandfather have? And she was like, somewhere between six to eight. <laughs> I was like, good Lord. They had like, nothing else to do, man. Yeah. They didn't have TV. They did. barely had radio. Mm -hmm. They were after, after fighting a civil war, they just settled down and went to work. I think it was just like kind of famine mentality of just like, you're going to want to make sure you have extra kids. Cause some of them are going to die. Oh yeah. Totally. Some of them are going to die. I mean, line. that's, that was the thing. So like back in fucking like medieval times. Yeah. It's like, when did you, that's why the whole 18th birthday is such a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you were like back in time, when you were like 14, 15, you already had your own house. You had a family. Like you had kids, grandkids. It's honestly not a bad idea when you think about it. Because I'm like, I think I would probably want to just have at least three. Because like, I remember in high school, I met like, I met this one kid who was a fucking insane kid. Right. And occasionally his mom would come eat with him at lunch. Mm -hmm. Right. Because his mom was like all about like being his mom, you know, okay. she didn't really seem like a lady that had much going for her. Right. Yeah. But that kid died when he turned 18. Oh damn. Yeah. He died in a, like a really bad car accident. And yeah. uh, I was, I always thought about his mom and I was like, she only had him. Like that's got to fucking suck. Yeah. Like your whole life revolved around your son and then you lost him before he even became an adult. I mean, even if you have multiple kids losing one kid, it's still got to fucking suck. Yeah, I mean, yeah. no no doubt. I mean, my mom lost a kid, you know? Yeah. And I know that fucking, like, devastated her. And I don't want to fucking experience shit like that because that's a different level of pain, mm -hmm. dog. It's like you lost, like, a piece of yourself. I, I was crazy that we're talking about this because my TikTok, you know who came up? Who? Mike Tyson talking about his daughter. Oh, yeah. In that one interview. And that one interview was like, so uh, how did you uh, how did you cope with it? Or how did you uh, get through that? He's like, I haven't. And he's just like all sad and shit, and his eyes are tearing up. Yeah, like this, he's like he yeah. was like when I got the news, like I was ready to like kill everybody. Yeah, he was like I have, I was like go get your gun, go to the hospital, kill indiscriminately. Yeah, it's like Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah, and then but he tells that one reporter, "You need to leave," because he started like all of his emotions coming out, and he's like one of those guys, of course, that it's that again sad, but it's that toxic masculinity where you can't show your emotions in front of someone. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. he was telling him, "You'll have to get out." Yeah, the way uh, his daughter died was pretty fucked. Yeah, it was that treadmill. Yeah, which I don't understand how that happened. I don't, it was a freak accident. Yeah. It's really, like, I mean, I, I doubt there was any foul play to be. No, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that there was foul play or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. It was just like, it's just like, how the fuck, dude? Like Jesus. I mean, there's no foul play with John Benet Ramsey. I mean, it's just it's it, obviously somebody broke into the house and just fucking killed her and raped her and threw her in a furnace. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're finally coming into the end of that. Really? Apparently, they finally are getting like conclusive evidence because they finally figured out some kind of DNA testing and shit. I don't know if it's true or not, yeah. but I'm just like, it's the parents. Like, who else could it be? Yeah. Like, I don't remember what fucking uh, last podcast like concluded on it, but I think they said that they believe that it might have been like the father or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's just shout out Ben Kissel. Um, <laughs> 
He's gone now. That sucks. Yeah, that sucks. But yeah. I kind of, I did kind of see it coming. I thought yeah. that maybe. But here's the one thing I'm really hopeful for. I'm really hopeful that like we don't see anything from Ben for like a year, and then he comes back fucking jacked, and then he he launches his new line of masculinity like testosterone oh my pre work pro, uh, program. He's the next. Uh, oh, what's his name? Andrew yeah. Tate. Yeah, he just comes back bald with sunglasses, smoking a cigar. He's just like. These LPN cucks. <laughs> I don't think, you know, like we no, talked no, about. Just... No, I know. We talked about it before. I don't think he's going to, he's not going to come back. Yeah. Um, obviously. Um, but at the same time, I don't, I think he's just going to kind of not do that anymore. Yeah. Like any I mean, podcast. I could, no, I could see him try to do stuff. Cause the thing is, a lot of people who do end up going through the whole cancellation thing, some mm. of them do end up coming back. Uh, to like a fan base because I was kind of curious to see if he had posted anything about it, and it. I mean, his Instagram is completely silent. Yeah. Uh, but on the, his most recent post, which I think was like a picture of Puffin, his dog. Yeah. All the comments there was like over like a thousand comments, yeah, and all of them were like, "Hey, take care of yourself." Blah blah. blah and people were showing stuff. support. They're like, "We'll be waiting for you when you come back." Yeah. And all no, this he and still that. has fans, of course, but I mean, but he's also he lost a lot of fans. But the thing is, yeah. One thing you also have to remember is he might no longer be a part of L like LPN or Last Podcast, but he still owns a portion of oh, it. Oh yeah, he'll still get residuals out of it. Yeah, so he's gonna still make like some fucking yeah, some fucking moolah off of this shit. Unless they like booted him somehow, which I don't understand how, but it uh, can they, happen. They would have to buy his ownership. Yeah, of if it. it comes out that you know, I mean, I'm assuming it's under investigation, all that you know, the allegations and everything like that. And if it comes out to be, you know, completely true. I don't even think it's that, man. I think it's just because they have to stick to their morality side of the show. Because obviously, no, yeah. if, if they were if they would say, hey, we're going to make an exception because he's our friend, it's going to make them look bad. Because obviously, so many times on that show, they've chimed off how people don't believe sex workers, people don't believe women. Oh, yeah, I understand and, that. I'm not saying it's not about the morality. Because like, they, they went, did the right choice. Because they went after um, Henry's wife, uh Whenever they had fought, because somebody who was involved with like their show, was it someplace underneath that show? Yeah, the show that she hosts. So they had a lawyer, like a uh, person that they talked to for like certain episodes, who got basically oh, terminated. That dark haired chick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, apparently I saw that. she apparently got terminated from like working with them because she was voicing her support for um for the girl. For the for the ex girlfriend of Ben Kissel, right, and then people had accused them of saying you're silencing the victim here because mm -hmm. Ben Kissel's your friend, and it got fucking muddy very quickly. Yeah, I mean, and then what? A lot of the fans don't understand. I feel like it's a lot of just like people who think they're like up here. Yeah, they're really just like fucking no ones. Um, they can't say. It, for all we know, there is a legal battle happening in the background mm -hmm. where you cannot say anything. And then she went out and said something. I don't know what she said. I never saw the thing. Maybe she did say one little thing that they were like, we can't talk about it. I'm sorry. She just, she, from my understanding is they were doing a live stream and mm -hmm. she had commented um, support for that girl. Okay. She said like uh, showing all the love and support for Taylor, which I think is her name. And yeah. they saw the comment, they kicked her from the live stream and then they sent her a message saying that she would no longer be a part or... Uh, uh, as far as being like used in the future and future episodes, because they used to call on her for like legal like advice and then, stuff. Yeah, I see why they fired her then, because it's like you were stirring the pot. You're stirring the pot, but also you're our legal counsel that we retain. Yeah, and you're it. it it's terrible to say, but you're supposed to have our side on it. Well, no, if, she she wasn't a part of their legal oh, counsel. Oh, okay, that's what I she thought. She was okay. somebody that they went to for legal answers when it oh. came to things relating to the show. Because, like, someplace underneath has to do with, like, women that get abduct, ab abducted. They do a bunch, of rant, uh, a bunch of stories that it, deal it, more with the women's side. Yeah, yeah. it involves with, with, the, with the women's side, you know. Yeah. So it, I think that was the whole thing, was they didn't like the fact that she chimed down on it, and it kind of made them look bad because they were like, oh, you're a show about women silencing women. Yeah. And then I remember um, Henry's wife, Natalie, ended up posting a thing about, like, you know, uh, 
that's not what we're doing. There's just a lot going on. We can't talk about it. And yeah. I feel like the pressure was up that they were like, with Ben at rehab and people fucking waiting for an answer, I don't think they're going to be satisfied with any answer other than we need to get rid of him. Even though that seems to be the contrary, because a lot of people who are hardcore fans of the show yeah. would love to see Ben come back. But I think that right now they have to say that he isn't going to come back. And whether or not he will come back is yeah. to be seen. It has to show he has to show that he has changed and, you know, he owns up to That's what I'm you know, saying. He comes happens, he comes back yoked, dog. He comes back fucking. I mean, good for him. Shit. He but comes back yoked and like uh just an alpha. And not not even an alpha, Sigma. dude. <laughs> no, he what I mean like what if he just comes back like yoked to the gills? But in like a humbling, like I'm completely sober, I'm clean, I diet hard, and then I fucking you know, uh, I, I don't know, I uh, I shut <laughs> down, I, I I shut down puppy mills. Yeah, I go there and beat the fuck out of puppy mills. <laughs> I was like the puppies, like no, the people. What the fuck? <laughs> no, but um, I mean, we'll see. Yeah, I I honestly do hope that he gets better, and I hope that... Oh, yeah, totally. I I hope that uh, we do see something of him in the future. Even if he just becomes, like, an online personality, that would be nice to see. But but I do feel bad when people are quick to just be like, oh, this guy isn't going to be... Like, this guy isn't ever going to be redeemable because he's done one bad mistake. And I'm not not saying this to just blame it on that, but... uh, Because there's other things there, like childhood traumas, its own your own brain working against you. But addiction is a very serious thing, and it does make people do very stupid shit Mm -hmm. to the point where it's like, oh, you can't come back from this. But, I mean, he's getting the help. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Can't tell the future. I want (laughs) to change the subject. I went on a drag show, uh, bar crawl. Is this because we were talking about sex workers? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> do drag do drag show people count on sex workers? No, they're not. They're, they're not? just uh, they're performers, like theater. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. They groom the children. <laughs> no, um, we went to a live reading of Cat in the Head at our local library. A drag person was doing this. <laughs> Stupid. No, so yeah, we uh, like we we found it online and we're like, oh, let's fucking try it. See how it is, bro. This uh, this drag queen that led us around town, the tallest person I've ever met, dude. Mm-hmm. I was like, hello. Like, what's your name? My name's Jay. We're like, okay. And we all had, like, little name tags. Mine was, uh, uh, I forgot what mine was. We It's just all, like, stupid, like, innuendos, like, Dick's Enormous and a bunch of shit like that. Yeah. Those were our drag names for the night. Mm. And we went to, like, four different bars. And the whole time we were doing that, the reason I brought up the whole uh, Sugar Daddy thing uh, is the whole night, whenever she would yell, there was things we had to do, and she would yell, uh, where's my sugar daddy? So we had to repeat her. And his name was Richard. So all night we were looking for Richard. Mm. We were looking for Dick. Yeah. So it was fun. And then we surrounded this one guy. Talk about Andrew Tay clone, bro. <laughs> like he was, had the sunglasses at night. He was wearing like a tight, too tight baby gap t-shirt. And he's all like, he's pretty built stuff, but he's on the <laughs> phone completely ignoring his girlfriend that's right next to him. Yeah. And the drag queen, like, stops. We stop right there because she's going to tell us, like, a little bit of history. She tells him history about the place, too. And the guy, you see, you roll his eyes and be like, oh, what the fuck? And I think he said, like, you know, you know. Yeah. She, he called her the bad word yeah. for gays. The F word? Yes. Okay. Um, But he said it under his breath. And, and she heard him. Mm-hmm. And so you see the drag queen go, like, are you Richard? <laughs> like, in the deepest man voice. And while he's on the phone talking to his whatever bros, talking about, like, testosterone and shit. And we all just start yelling, where is my sugar daddy? (laughs) And the whole time he's trying to talk on the phone, his girlfriend's going fucking wild, just laughing her ass off. Yeah. And he's getting redder and redder and redder. He's all embarrassed and shit because there's a drag queen pointing him out. It was the funniest thing ever to watch someone. It's like, if you're you're uncomfortable at a drag show, why did you go to one? No, he wasn't in a drag show. He was just standing there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, uh, he wasn't in the drag show? No, he so, was just standing there. It was on the street. Oh, it was on yeah, the street. Yeah, it was the part of the pub crawl. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. We went to a drag show after that. Oh. Uh, but, uh, oh God, we were, uh, the groups we were with, there was, like, a bunch of, like, couples with us, mm-hmm. and there was a bachelorette party that was with us. Oh. These bitches were wild. <laughs> they, like, usually... they weren't even drunk yet, and they were just crazy white women. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh... 
one of them did a dead drop on concrete. Mm-hmm. And we were like, you hit your head. Like, you totally fucking hit your head, but you're trying to play it off as drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was fun. The drag show was cool, too. I saw Prince transform into Katy Perry. It was really cool. The transition, I wish I So Prince it. never died. No. <laughs> Turned into Katy Perry. <laughs> Is Prince dead? Yes. Is he? He's been dead. Okay, just making sure, because... He's been dead for a minute, dog. I know. TikTok just keeps confusing me. Yeah, he died of, like, an overdose. Yeah. Prince? Yeah. Was it an overdose? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think that was, like, the early... Um, I think it was like one of the early cases of like uh, fentanyl poisoning. Oh, uh, okay. He more than likely did some bad coke that was probably laced with fentanyl, yeah. and they found him like unconscious in his elevator. Oh, that sucks. Of his, his own elevator. Of his 10 story house. <laughs> I don't know how many stories it was, but. Was the elevator in the shape of a P? Yeah. Yeah. I like how he just had everything in the shape of a P. What do you mean? Like his guitar was a P. Yeah, like the, all the different kinds of guitars. Oh no, that's his. That's that. That symbol is a symbol. He oh no, made not up. the not the P. Yeah, that's right. It a, might as well be a P. That symbol is like technically what his name was for a while. Really? Yeah. Oh, the be, artist formerly known as Prince. Yeah, yeah, because when he he changed his name legally to that symbol, and because that symbol doesn't have a thing, mm-hmm. uh, it's like a mix of like both signs of like male, female, yeah. and some other shit. I still believe that Prince like did hands down the best halftime like show performance yeah, for the dude. Super Bowl. When that when that fucking when he started playing the solo and that white thing comes up, yeah, you see him like a thousand, like a hundred feet tall and he's just like Wee! Yeah. He's fucking playing guitar on a wet stage in the mm-hmm. rain singing Purple Rain. You can't fucking Hells eat yeah. that. Like God gave him rain for the song Purple Rain. Exactly. Yeah. Like God was like, I love you, Prince. How fucking high do you think he was in that moment? He so was like, fucking oh, fuck, high, I'm, dude. Too, I'm too high for like, he too wasn't. Much. He wasn't wet because of the rain. He yeah. was just sweating his balls yeah, you, off. <laughs> you really think the weekend did a better job? Fuck yeah. you. Get out of here with that gay shit. <laughs> Although um, I haven't seen uh, Dr. Dre, Eminem, 50 Cent. At that one town show. It was pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah. But my favorite is... Um, Janet Jackson? No. I think it was the... Um, I forgot who the fuck... I think it might have been... I don't remember. I don't remember who the fuck, who the fuck did the halftime show. It might have been Katy Perry that... Oh, with the Sharks? N- not, not, not that. There was one artist where they did a song and for a quick minute... No, I think it was it might have been Lady Gaga. Well, whatever. Oh, when she jumps off the top. Yo, yo the little. Yeah. No, that, <laughs> that one was stupid. No, there was one halftime show where they had a quick performance, uh, where Missy Elliott showed up. Oh yeah, that was but good. I for, but I forgot who who was the main performer. Yeah, I don't know, but that was good. And also, we've seen some pretty cringe ones throughout the years. Mm-hmm. Like the, I like the Bruno Mars one was pretty cringe. Yeah. Um, um, sadly the. Red Hot Chili Peppers one was pretty cringe. Yeah. Because, I mean, they were, like, kind of offbeat on the guitars and everything. Because, I mean, it was all pre-recorded. And they came out and said afterwards, like, hey, guys, you know this shit's all pre-recorded. Like, <laughs> most of it's pre-recorded. Yeah. Because we're up there huffing and puffing, running around. I know a lot of people got upset whenever they found out that the um, the wi- uh, <laughs> the Whitney Houston American uh, National Anthem is pre-recorded. What? Yeah. Are you well, serious? A lot of people didn't know that. Damn. She pre-recorded it before she went out there. But the thing is, I still believe that she was capable of singing the same way live. Yeah. yeah Wasn't I think it because like she had a sore throat or something huh? like that? No, no, no. They often do pre-recordings anyways. Uh, like be- Ashley Simpson? Uh, no, it's because I think it's for like television reasons. Yeah. Like, no, yeah, that's why the people thought the Red Hot Chili Peppers were like, oh, y'all fucking sold out. I was like... No, because it's fucking hard to hear the cues with the f- millions of people out in the crowd. Yeah. So, yeah. But, um, God, what was it? Unless uh, it's like a Mexican soccer game where they have to blurt it out. Oh, yeah. They, they have to use like some kind of like sounding software to like to knock out like all what the crowd is saying. Mm-hmm. Because every time they kick the ball, they go, puto. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like how uh, it was. No, what's uh, the, the other funny thing that they do? What is it? There's a. Uh, Oh, whenever the referee gives somebody oh, a card, they go, Pulero. <laughs> My favorite thing was uh, uh, during the the World Cup over in Russia. Mm-hmm. For one, the, when the Mexicans were over there, they drank the fucking city dry. <laughs> like, they drank everything. And mm-hmm. they had to, like, uh, import a bunch of alcohol from out of country so many places. You know, every time they, they've had any kind of, uh, any kind of, like, soccer-like thing, like, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a foreign country... 
Mexicans when they show up, they party with everybody, yeah, dude. dude. They did it when when they had the uh, uh, the Dubai one, the Dubai one. The Dubai people were like, "Yo, these people are drinking in broad daylight. Yeah. They're not allowed to do that." And they're like, "Ooh!" <laughs> <laughs> and they're out there dancing yeah. and shit. But my favorite thing though with that, the culture exchange. They mm-hmm. made tacos, but since they don't eat like, uh, there were some that didn't eat cow, so they had like the oh, no, they don't eat pork. Mm-hmm. So they made like uh, like tacos with like other meats and everything like that. It's like lamb. Thing, yeah, probably. and they like made it all and like, hey, try this food. And then there was like just a whole culture exchange. And then they went like, there was a bunch of Mexicans. There's a whole TikTok thing of them. They went to a restaurant there in Dubai and they just raided it. Mm. Like this guy was in the back just sweating, cooking his fucking naan and everything. And these Mexicans come in with like pots and pans, like we're making pasole. <laughs> <laughs> and the guys like, oh, okay. Uh, have, but they loved it. Dude, we have, like, one of the wildest cultures. Yeah. But, but I think we have, like, one of the most, like, hospitable cultures, too. We do have some very rowdy fans, though. That's the thing. That is true. Because at, the, at the other thing that happened at the Russia, uh, Russian uh, FIFA, yeah, uh, they had to warn Mexico, the whole country of Mexico, hey, you got to get your people under control because they're yelling some shit in the, in the, in the stands. Uh, we'll ban you from playing in FIFA. Mm-hmm. If you don't get control of your fucking fans, yeah. So they had to go on like national TV and be like, "Hey guys, cut the shit! Like we want to play soccer. Come on." Well, back whenever they were uh, they were having a, uh, there was a while where they ended up banning Mexican fans from a soccer thing. Oh yeah, that was like a year or two ago because they were they didn't like the fact that they yelled profanities whenever mm-hmm. like they, they do the kickoff and they you know yeah and they were trying to establish like this rule of like okay we can't. Be, like this has to be family friendly, yeah. On like uh, family friendly event. Man, kids hear worse shit in fucking households in Mexico. A hundred percent. But I think that's what they were. They're trying to like. They're trying to tame our culture, and I'm like, nah, nah. <laughs> it's not gonna happen, dog. Or what was the other one that? Uh, I thought you were gonna talk about the the fight that happened at that one uh, stadium in Mexico, in like mm-hmm. the Mexican league. Uh, it shut like it was like not even a quarter of the way into the uh, the second half. Mm-hmm. And the crowd just started fucking fighting, and then they saw just started like going all over the field and everything. They had to shut down the game. Yeah, um, and then they stopped playing at that stadium. They're like, you know what? Y'all don't get soccer anymore. <laughs> yeah, there were suicides everywhere. <laughs> Who do you think the most annoying like Mexican soccer club is? Oof. Because I would, I would say that like our family likes one of the more annoying ones. Yeah, Club America. They, those fans get rowdy. They get rowdy as a motherfucker. Yeah, but then Chivas are right there with them. Yeah, I, honestly, uh, I think they're neck and neck. Yeah, they're definitely neck and neck. What is it? I feel like the only time that they're ever their calmest is, is when like the when the national team like Mexico yeah. plays. Yeah, but even then they talk so much shit. They dude. talk a lot of shit. They're like, man, why do you even put that guy in? Man, I'm better than him. <laughs> I don't want to pick favorites and say that fucking like Chivas are more annoying fans, but they do like I do feel like they have a sense of like, like along with like America fans, like they yeah. have like this sense of superiority. Like they feel like what's, they're what's Chivas? Huh? Guadalajara, right? Guadalajara, yeah. yeah. And Club America is just like, where is Club America? Huh? Is that Tamaulipas? No, 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 no. no. Tamaulipas has their own team, I think. Who the fuck are they? I have no idea. I think no, they're just they're just a soccer organization okay cool the the ca just stands for central america yeah or maybe it's um i i want to say nakaksa fans i think they were formed by like no i'm not saying that they're from tamalipas i think that's the most annoying fans yeah yeah i'm not gonna fucking look it up right now i, yeah, I feel like that's gonna be just a, fucking, a rabbit like, hole that's a rabbit hole we should probably, you should get into like fucking some sports lore dog yeah we should yeah because yeah. I know what is it? They were um, there was a big old thing during the World Cup that uh, the Mexican the guy who was the coach for the uh, World Cup team mm-hmm. fucking like uh, sabotaged the team. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, after the game, the Mexicans and like at the crowd were like, "Hey, we're gonna fucking kill you!" <laughs> <laughs> no, like on national TV, being like, "Don't fucking go to sleep." <laughs> I remember, like, back in the day of, like, UFC, um, the Chell Sonnen days. Chell Sonnen was such a fucking good shit talker, dude. Mm-hmm. Because the shit that he used to say. He used to have this ri- rivalry with Anderson Silva. And oh, Anderson yeah. Silva at the time was, like, the most dominant UFC fighter. And, like, the, like, 
um, he's early, a lanky one, right? like the yeah. early two thousands, two thousand tens, right? He no, he was a he was a um, a dark skinned uh, Brazilian guy, yeah. Right? He was like really lanky. Yeah, he was known as like the spider, and he was yeah. fucking unstoppable for a long time. And uh, Chell Sonnen was probably the best like American. Um, I think they were fought. I think they fought in Walter White. I believe I could be wrong, or lightweight. It might have been one of those two. But that's besides the point. Basically. He talked so much shit before they fought that mm-hmm. when he went to go fight in in Brazil, that he had to be escorted in and out of the arena because Brazilian fans wanted to kill him. <laughs> he was saying shit like, like these Brazilian fans are crazy. Like we pulled up in my tour van and they were trying to feed the tour van food. They were like, "What kind of camel is this?" Like, like he was he was. The thing about Chel Sonnen is was he, he white. Yeah, he's white. Okay. And he, the, <laughs> the, thing is, funnier. the thing that's funny about Chell Sonnen is that he's very PG, but in a fucked up way. Like, he doesn't yeah. curse at all, but he always do, he he has a very funny, like, way of, like, insulting people. Yeah. And he just goes through these crazy fucking, like, narratives and shit, right? And he was saying all this stupid shit about, like... Like how dumb Brazilian people are before going to go fight in Rio de Janeiro. Oh, it's like that one Mexican guy that that beat the the guy that was the reigning champ out of Brazil, and they uh, were fighting in Brazil, and he got on stage after he won. He was like, "Hey, uh, Brazilians, vale verga, uh, chinga su madre, and all this other shit." And they had to escort his ass out because he started throwing shit into the ring at him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Just no fucking chill, dude. Well, Brazilian fans are very, like, hardcore, like, don't fuck with Brazil. Yeah, like, of course they are. Every yeah. country is like that. I guess that is true. I, I, but almost to a point where it gets kind of fucking annoying, no, dog. yeah, totally. I saw that, like, already two different, like, Mexican um, artist groups have been hit with death threats from the Mexican cartels for singing about them. Like... So a good example was what happened the most recent with, um, you know, like the biggest <coughs> fucking, the biggest fucking Mexican <coughs> star right now, Peso Pluma, right? Oh, yeah, he had he had he had a song where he had mentioned, he had mentioned uh, the Sinaloa cartel, which yeah. is like El Chapo's is um, cartel, right? Yeah. And he didn't say anything bad about them. He just had made like oh like we like he had said like a line to like basically. Saying like, oh, we roll hard like the Sinaloa cartel, something like that. He basically just said that. That's a, that's the best example that I can give right now. And yeah. just because he did that, they hung a giant banner in Sinaloa, saying, "If you come and perform here, as your tour says it, that you are going to, yeah, you are gonna die." They basically gave him the Chilano like fucking service of like yeah. handing him the note and him being like. Yeah, but, but he's still saying that song. Uh, yeah, he's still saying that song and died. Blue ain't gonna do that shit, but you know. no, he didn't. He didn't fucking do it. That fucking mullet of his, yeah, like hit under. Did his you hat. ever hear the story of how they fucking killed him? Yeah, uh, we uh, talked about it before. Uh, Chilano Sanchez. Yeah, yeah, like they they disguised themselves as cops mm-hmm. and they fucking like escorted him and they basically like killed him and his brother. I think. I didn't know about his brother. I just know they. Yeah, it was like, him. It was him and yeah. his brother that were uh, that were leaving the venue but i'm like bro if you get thrown by the cartel you're not gonna try to like at least get like a police escort or something like goddamn well, i mean he thought he got the police i feel like when I, with yeah. an artist as big as special Bloomer, he would just have like crazy fucking security but even then i think they just ended up canceling the show oh yeah duh because you're like I'm, we're not about to have a fucking gunfight with a cartel but also like it's why just, it's putting a lot of people in danger like if he didn't cancel it he's a fucking asshole yeah but i'm like how, why would you cancel like Besa pluma and like another like really prominent mexican group that sings really good mexican music but you had no problem with that fucking little girl that went down there to sing her fucking weird ass song oh yeah and she complained about the mexican food all she, of them did because they're from fucking washington state the chicken from oregon is much better like the fuck bitch, you <laughs> shut the fuck, the fuck up you, it was like you got a chance to go down to mexico city to like you know look around like fucking learn about being mexican or something although my uh <laughs> i forgot about this what happened? so uh was it recently my brother-in-law went to mexico right oh yeah he had to go down to juarez right oh yeah, and, my, my brother in law had yeah, to do that too. Yeah, he didn't he didn't like it down there. He just said like one he for some reason he went down there and he just said that like everything down there is a lot more expensive than you realized. Mm-hmm. 
and I think it's because so many like people have to go back there for like immigration reasons and shit. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, he ended up going down there. And he just said like everything sucked down there, man. Like like it's just not a great place. He said like the food sucked and all this and that. And he was uh, he we, they threw him a green uh, green card party, right? And then one of his guests had came over and be like, "Oh, how was your trip to Juarez?" And he was like, "Oh, it was awful. That place sucked. It was hot. The food was terrible." And uh, his guest goes. Um, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's crazy. I'm from Juarez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool, cool, cool. You want to step outside real fast? I'm going to beat the fuck out of you. <laughs> that shit was making me fucking laugh yeah. so fucking hard. His green, he had a, so he had a, like, I got my green day, uh, my green my card, green my green, my green card, um, Start party. Singing American idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't want to be an American, American idiot. idiot. <laughs> Yeah, the dog's gone hey, did out I, of key. And hey, did I fuck what finally wake up? We getting winter early or what? Jesus. <laughs> now, nah, but now nah, he had a fucking blast. Um, I mean, He got drunk as fuck that night. And uh, and he lost his citizenship. <laughs> 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 he got in a fight with a cop and they sent his ass back. <laughs> I thought this was America. <laughs> I'm an American. Uh, there's a return policy. <laughs> <laughs> now, they, uh, they ended up like... um. You know, having like a really a party. I think it was also his birthday, or it was his late birthday. Yeah, because uh, he ended up having to spend his birthday alone in Juarez, which fucking sucked. Oh uh, yeah. But um, shout out to Gio, my <laughs> boy. He fucking uh, got just his fucking green. You got the, his. You got his green card, huh? He's just sitting alone in the in the hotel, and he's. <laughs> oh god, it makes me think of that fucking sad ass. Have you ever seen that sad ass video of the guy who like is cutting himself slices of a birthday cake? And he's feeding his dogs. And he's feeding like all these stray dogs. Yeah, and man. Of cake. God, that fucking got me. And he was just like crying, and I was just yeah, like, and the all... dogs were like nudging him, trying to make him feel better and shit. I was like, <sighs> damn it, like that's the hard reality for some people, man. Yeah, some man. people are just fucking alone. Yeah, I don't think I could do it, man. No, nah, I couldn't be alone. I couldn't be that alone. I think alone. that's like I, I. That's like my one big fear of just like being be, being stuck somewhere alone. Like I know if like I'm. If it's like a survival situation, mm -hmm. like I and I ended up being alone, I think I'll be fine. I'll just go a little fucking crazy. But if it was like, for some reason, the family abandoned me, you know, wife left me, and I was fucking alone on the streets and everything like that, mm -hmm. I'd probably fucking just kill myself. Like yeah. That would be the only time I would ever think about killing myself. Yeah. That's what you got to think about. Like, it must be hard for some people who, like, reach that point in their life where they just have yeah. nobody, man. Reach out to your friends. Those ones that you don't talk to on Facebook. Yeah. That, yeah. that one friend from high school who keeps telling himself that he's going to kill himself. Like, go make sure he's still alive. Yeah. But yeah. I just got to make a couple phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> your phone just starts going off. Like, oh, it's me. <laughs> I remember I used to have this one oh, friend, yeah. dude, who used to always say shit like that like all the time like like nonchalantly and i used to always be like bro stop saying that shit yeah and i think i finally got to the point where we were like adults and he was still saying shit like that and <laughs> i know i shouldn't have said it but i was like either do it or don't man no yeah i've done that before it's like yeah. you've been saying this shit for so long i just i don't even think you're gonna do it i think you're fucking lying i think you're a pussy <laughs> <laughs> my mom dude she fucking dropped it on someone Really? Because they were like, you know, they were going on wild and shit and being like, I'm going to kill myself. You're making me have to kill myself. And my mom's like, there's a train track that goes through fucking Gainesville. If you lay on it, a train will come by. It'll make it quick. <laughs> like, no emotion. Mm -hmm. Just like, yeah, there's a train. Go do it. Yeah. Yeah. No? Then fucking grow up. Do your Do what you need to do to fix. Have you seen that thing that people were talking about recently where they had they were doing like these brain studies on um people they're on people's brains like what of uh of what happens um after a person passed away. They basically did like I don't know who the fuck signs up for this. They're like, I'm gonna sign up for y'all to scan my brain while you kill me so to see what happens when we die. <laughs> nice. And um they found that um apparently Brain activity is still going on for almost three hours. Oh wow! After you die, that's weird. And then, um, uh, the people who were like pulled back from it were saying that like that shit was insane. Uh, and they're like, "What happens?" They're like, "Uh, they they were like, I fucking like relived my whole life." 
But I mean, you can't. How did they figure out it goes on for three hours after you die? Because they were scanning. They were like, like they had like, sh- like sensors and shit all around the fucking brain to see if brain activity was still happening. But I'm saying you can't. But, the do thing, that. but here's the, here's the thing. Like, they managed to do it somehow, and they what they said is at that the brain activity went like from like was it like 30% to like 100 within that time it's a, it's a pretty wild thing like you you the whole thing I'll send myth. you I'll send you the article no no but you know the whole thing's a myth that the brain only works like 20% of your brain's going yeah 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 it's like but, 100% of your brain's going if only 20% you would just be on the ground like Aah. no but, but but what people were saying was that they experienced like a level of like ultra consciousness yeah that what they said it's the um, What's that one drug that people take? A DMT? Yeah, they say it's that. Like, you get a release of something very similar. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't, like, i am always been the kind of person that's like, that's the, that's the fucking key, dog. That's the key to the other dimension, dog. That's how we fucking go see the fucking space elves. Okay. That's how we get to the other side. I'm all, I'm confident. I'm confident that when that time comes... Shout out to all the people that shot themselves in the brain that didn't get there. But um, but when you get there and you get that trip, you un- you open the fucking veil of reality and you op- you go into there and you see like the fucking jaguars in the jungle, dog. Okay. I'm telling you. You relive all of history, huh? You relive all of history. I go back to who I truly was, Napoleon. <laughs> Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting these French girls on my nuts. Until they put you in a fucking tower and you go insane. Yeah, yeah shout out, to, shout out to the girls that don't shave their pussies. <laughs> French women. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder. Actually, I wonder if that's still like a thing. What do you mean? Like girls that like, don't shave their pussies? No, like in like the whole thing with French women, like the whole mm-hmm. like stereotype in like nineties and eighties movies. Yeah. Like, oh, they don't shave. And they... The only thing I've seen recently about France yeah. is they're being in. Inf- like infested with bed bugs. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. They, I think they said that like over like they said like forty percent of uh, citizens in France have bed bugs. Well, I know why. It's because they don't fucking use ACs or anything. Yeah. Yeah, like it's crazy. Uh, or they don't shave their pussies. Yeah, that's, too. They're just living in there. Mm-hmm. Well, that's called that's called pubic lice. <laughs> yeah. Oh my little hair down there. I wear like a beard, like I'm fucking Santa Claus at the mall. Just the young Santa Claus. Young Santa Claus. <laughs> Here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. No, nah, but. Do you think Santa Claus goes to town on the L's? What do you mean? Like, like he has Mrs. Claus, but maybe I mean, they've been. Are, you, are like, you suggesting that Santa Claus could potentially be raping his own, like, elves? Yeah. Or do you mean, like, he's just beating the shit out of, like, he's Joe Jacksoning them? Pretty much. I guess we don't he, know what kind of man Santa Claus is behind doors. A pencil, bro. Oh. Hmm. Did that get you riled up? Like, what the no, fuck? no, <laughs> no. I literally was just like, I was just like, kind of like messing it like this, yeah. and it went crack. I was like, oh damn. Was that the line for you? Just talking about Santa Claus raping the elves? <laughs> I've had it. <laughs> we need to stop this man. <laughs> or, or they just like, he's not raping them. Maybe it's like, you know, Miss Claus gives him a couple free passes, and Miss Claus is giving him a hall pass, and you, yeah. you're thinking like, or she uh, cucks him with all the elves. Uh. Are the but aren't the are the are the elves just elves or are they like children? No, I think they're elves. But why are they always like depicted as elven children? Because elves are supposed to be like forever young mm. looking. Mm. Yeah, so that's another weird part about. Like that. I don't. That's fucking. Uh, like I'm not about that lowly shit, dog. But mm. nah. Yeah, but. <laughs> You just imagine Santa Claus is a cuck. He's just sitting in the yeah. closet. <laughs> that's fucking anime logic, dog. Yeah. Mrs. Claus is like, here, come on, elves. I got a present for you. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> They're running a choo-choo train on her. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of odd and weird shit. How much fucking puss is being thrown around at retirement homes, dog? Dude, so much, probably. I heard that they have, like, STD issues. There. No, they do. Uh, really because bad. they can't clean themselves well. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Uh, down in Florida, there's a community... Um, I forgot what the fuck it's called, but it's a, it's just an old folks community. It's like a whole little town mm-hmm. and they all drive around little golf carts. Like the whole town's built for it. And on the golf carts, they have little antennas and on the antennas, they hang uh little, like the little shower loofahs, the little like colored ones. Yeah, yeah. 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 Each color means a different fetish. 
damn. Yeah, and they're just rolling around like that. So when you see mm. someone like that, beep, beep, I'm over here. Yeah. I see you like stepping on penises. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like some of them are for like cucking. Some are for like. Um, so like it's like cucking, doming, uh, pegging. Uh, uh, threesomes, threesomes, uh, orgies, a sub. male on male. Oh, it's everything. They have yeah. like I don't know. I didn't even know they made that many colors of loofahs. Yeah, right. yeah. They're, they're fucking Amazon dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could have done something else. You could have just done like a sticker. Yeah, I remember uh, honk if you want dick. Like that's it. Uh, have you heard about the subdivision one? No. To know if somebody's house is like a swinger house, they'll leave a pineapple outside upside down. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. yeah. There's, like, cruises about that. And then here in Georgia, uh, it's uh, one of them, one of the common ones down here is that people will hang those uh, stars on fences. Really? Yeah, if you ever go around town and you see, like, a house that has, like, a giant, like, fucking, like, nautical star. Uh, yeah. Apparently, oh, wow. that means that that's a swinger house. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I know uh, from the military, from what I've heard from my military friends. Um. Whenever, uh, you know, the husband or the wife ships out in the, in like the, gov- in like the military housing, it's usually like a two floor house mm-hmm. in the top floor. There's always a window up top. You put a plot, uh, a potted plant up there. That means you're open for business. Mm-hmm. And I think it's like a different plan if you're a male or a female. Uh, so yeah. And also they call that uh Jody's coming to visit. <laughs> yeah. They have a name for it. It's Jody. What the hell? Yeah. It was like, Oh, you got a visit from Jody. Oh, my wife, you know, your wife's out there uh, hanging out with Jody. So, yeah, it's pretty funny. I don't know where that Jody thing came from. It probably means something to me. I, but, I don't know. But I think it's funny. It's just a potted plant. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they were there about to go home, they just take it down. There's got to be a lot of people out there like, what's this random potted plant doing here? Yeah. Like, you don't put it anywhere. You just kind of move it around. I don't get, like, these crazy, like, like sex subcultures like i get it some people like to have, have like fucking fun with like their like lives like w- with like their with like i guess their spouses or like relationships or whatever as but long as they're both comfortable with it yeah as long as yeah. they're both comfortable with it for me like i i established like a long time ago like with my wife it's just like i'm not really for that shit like i'm yeah. i'm way too jealous of a person to like really like get past it and um i told her like it would it it just like would not fly for me. Like I don't. I would have to be in a really weird state of mind to be okay with it. Like I would. I would, I would basically have to be like done. Yeah, done with the relationship yeah. to want to even try to do shit like that. Yeah. It it just because to me it just seems kind of like if you're not gonna be like committed, then why would you try to make a commitment anyways? Yeah. It doesn't seem like. I mean, I don't know. I know there's a lot of back and forth with it because uh, there's like this famous like streamer guy. I think I don't know if you know who he is. He's called like Destiny or something like that. He's like, him, he's like yeah. a dude that's got like blue hair, or whatever. And he's like he's basically a guy who does a lot of online debates. He's a really damn good debater. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so apparently, him and his wife have an open relationship. Oh. And it's. Wait, does he, they both have an open relationship or his wife has an open relationship? They both do. Okay. So apparently they when they first met each other, they were both into having open relationships. Okay. And then they ended up getting married and they still continued to do so. Um, and See, if I was into that, I wouldn't get married. Well, that's the thing. That's, yeah. that's the weird thing is he always constantly is defending this relationship because he's just like... You know, like he 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 basically is just like I don't want to, I don't want people to like, you know, try to push their own insecurities onto me because I'm not insecure about this. Like I'm okay with it. She's okay with it. It it is what it is. I'm like, okay, they're both comfortable with this, but at the same time, it's like, bro, you like don't expect not to get a lot of people saying shit to you because one, you're a public figure. And then on top of that, it's like people are always going to come after things that they don't fucking understand. Yeah, obviously. Like, I mean, for he, me, it's like. He constantly debates these alpha bro guys. Oh, like yeah, he, he like, does. And they're all, they always bring that up. Mm-hmm. They always bring up, it's just like, you okay with another man fucking your wife? And he's just like, yeah. And. And they're like, oh, you're she, she's cucking you. It's like, no, I fuck other women too. Yeah. And it's like, cool. But it's like, to me. But even then, that blow still hurts, dog. It still it still kind of hurts. Yeah, you know it's got to hurt him some 
way. Or maybe he doesn't, because, I mean, it's just the way he is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's like... what? Maybe it hurt if that dude was like, I'm going to fuck your wife. No, yeah. But, um, no, to me, it's like, um, I mean, if you're into that, cool. It doesn't bother me. Mm-hmm. It's As long as you're not trying to get me involved. Yeah. But, I mean, it's the whole, like, if you're gay, like, are you happy? Yeah. Then that's what matters. It, I mean, that's the that's where it comes down to. If you're yeah. happy doing it, that's what matters. Yeah, just don't do it in my state. <laughs> <laughs> just don't do it in my neighborhood. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it in my house. Oh, what was it? Did you see Get that? out of my America. <laughs> it's that one thing, uh, fucking, uh, I don't know if it's real or not. I saw, like, a kind of in passing, uh, what's his face, uh, Ron DeSanctimonious. Yeah. yeah, he uh, he just passed something, or is trying to pass something, where it's like, oh, you can kill child predators. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, no fucking, I mean, cool. That's cool, but yeah. I don't know if that's going to, like. But, like, where do you draw the line to where, like, oh, we thought he was a child predator? See, I've always heard a lot of people, especially down here in the South, say, like, I think the only thing you should do when it comes to, like, uh, like, sex predators or child molesters is to just fucking kill them. And I, I don't necessarily disagree, but that is a bad way to go if someone yeah. gets falsely accused. That's the only issue with that. If someone gets falsely accused of something and they later through DNA evidence find out that it was a lie, because that has happened before, yeah. is people are like years later get found out that like, oh, there's no fucking possible way he could have like been the culprit of this. Got to get him out of jail, and then he ends up suing the jail or the justice system for a fuck if load of money. If he's that long, because huh? they kill him. Like, uh, the prisoners, they take the justice in their own hands, and then the cops just turn a blind eye to it. Yeah, yeah. Because if, if you're branded a child rapist or a molester, mm-hmm. or, or just a rapist at that point, yeah, they'll they'll just fucking like, oh, you're a piece of shit, and they'll kill you. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah. why would you want to go ahead and jump the gun and just say, and risk the risk the chance that you might accidentally kill an innocent person as opposed to just let them, you know, live out the rest of their days in like confinement where they could potentially just get killed by other inmates there. I have a wild idea. I think maybe what they need to do is just uh, get rid of any corporal punishment to the inmates. If they do something to a sex predator. Yeah. To me, it's uh, my whole thing is like, you know, the, the American uh, prison system, it's, fucking sapping of, of all our money like there's too many people in prisons and everything like that uh one they've already kind of done it but they uh, the petty like marijuana crimes mm-hmm. you know they're kind of letting those people loose because it was just a baggie of weed like nothing else um why don't they run the prisons like little mini cities little mini towns See, there's still guards. It's still posted up. It runs like a little, like, cop town. And in those towns, the inmates learn skills, like farming, sewing. It's, it's pretty much you're throwing them back into, like, fucking pioneer times. Yeah. Whatever they grow, that's your food. You give them a set of livestock, they have to care for that livestock. Mm-hmm. And that way they learn, you know. Some of them just never had responsibility, never grew up, so they yeah. just do whatever the fuck they want. It'll teach them responsibility, teach them how to how to have empathy for things, and how to be patient, and how to learn. And it'll just help them learn. Yeah. It, it would be like a rehab, pretty much. Mm-hmm. But you're there living in that spot like that. Well, I think the issue with that is, one, they would have to spend a lot of money on that infrastructure, which they're not going to do. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, prisons are already cash cows themselves because yeah. they obviously have all the other companies that make prisoners do work there for dirt cheap, which then mm-hmm. they sell the product. And then they don't – like nobody benefits other than the person who owns the prisons. Yeah. It's, and the, it, they just need to unprivatize them. Yeah, but that's the yeah. problem is like we have the most private prisons yeah. out of any other fucking developed country in the world. <laughs> and then these prisoners, like, yeah, they went to prison, they did something wrong, but they don't deserve to rot away in a damp cell where they can't get their fucking like medications. I mean, I'm sure we've already established as a society that we've figured out that like, oh wait, like current day prison system is just like it's slave labor. It's it's just slave labor. Yeah. Like the <clears throat> you pay the, them pennies to build furniture. Yeah. Yeah. You could do that with the Amish. Yeah. They'll do it for free. 
I did see a fucking TikTok of your homage, though. They'll do, if, they'll do it for fucking a picture of your ankles. <laughs> yeah, but... um, <laughs> <laughs> No, it was this Amish guy. But mm-hmm. It might have been a Mennonite because he was using actual power tools. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he had a chainsaw. And they built the shed. And then they put a piece of long wood. Mm-hmm. And they they made they they put hinges on it and they put it onto the front of the shed as the door, and it was a whole solid piece of wood, and then they just took a chainsaw, cut the most perfect rectangle for the door entrance, mm-hmm. like no not, no levels or anything. This guy was just eyeballing it, the straightest cut across you could ever see. Yeah, dude, because they have those fucking strong ass like farmer yeah, farms, Jesus dude. Christ, dude. It's like they have such stability for it. Mm-hmm. Or when they uh, when they raise barns yeah. in like a day. When we were in Savannah, uh, we saw it was. I like need to sneak a goddamn video camera in one of them bedrooms, dog. I bet the Amish be fucking slinging dick like crazy. Are they no, long they day? do the they do the. I think they do the same thing as the Mormons. What do you mean? They wear like the long pajamas underneath. Really? And they only have the hole for like the penis. That is some bullshit. Yeah. The Mormons do that too. I think so. I thought they just did the fucking um. What's I, it called? Most the, Mormons, I think, are. Or, or um, or a lot of Mormons are Amish. A lot of Mormons. There's a lot of Amish or Mormon. Yeah. Or well, Latter Day Saints, I think. Latter Day. One of those. They're all fucking weird. I just thought the whole thing was the whole soak soaking thing. Oh yeah, that thing where you just put it in, just let it soak. Yeah. Well, not just that, but apparently there's a. The rule is you can't do the moving, but if you have a friend, yeah, just that the, that moves the bed, bro. That's a bro right there. <laughs> that's a bro. Yeah. Bro for life. Yeah. <laughs> Whipping the fucking horse buggy around. <laughs> we gotta go. <laughs> or what is it? There was that one. Uh, it was a Mennonite, and he had a horse and buggy, and he had a sound system in it. Because uh, they can have electronics. They can. The Mennonites can. Mennonites. Yeah. Oh uh, well, yeah. In Savannah, we, there was like a group of like. Of course, there was like the church people out there trying to hand out, and for Scythe Park, they're trying to hand out their little pamphlets, but like, hey, come to the Church of Latter Day Saints, and here. Uh, Jehovah's Witness and Christians, Baptists, and everything like that. Yeah. And they're all very pushy. They're just, like, getting in front of you, hanging you, like, oh, shit, and trying to go around them, and you have to be rude. Like, I don't want to be rude to you, but mm-hmm. get the fuck out of my way. But the Mennonites, nicest pushers I've ever seen, dude. <laughs> like, one guy, uh, the one guy, he came up and was like, hello, sir, would you like a pamphlet? Uh, no, thank you. Okay, sorry to bother you. And he walks away. Doesn't mm-hmm. try to push it on me or anything. He saw, like, no, I don't want it. Cool. Mm-hmm. I was like, what a nice man. I'll take that pamphlet now. <laughs> They're probably just used to it, dog. Yeah. They're probably just like, there's no point in getting riled up. Most people aren't going to give a shit about this anyways. But, I mean, they're just really nice. Yeah. Yeah. The Hopeful Witnesses, I mean, they're they're a little bit more aggressive on the whole, like, knocking on the door and shit. Yeah. But, I mean, even then, like, it's kind of like... I, I just feel bad for them, dude. They're brainwashed. They're it's like fucking the, brainwashed. The black Jehovah's Witness cowboy yeah. that came to my apartment in Houston. Yeah. Bro, this guy just would not let up. I told him, I was like, bro, I don't want it. He's like, well, just take the pamphlet. We'll see what happens. Have a good day. I'm like, what the fuck? Do you, <laughs> you Django? Like, what the hell? I know. It's just like, I don't understand what they, what they think they're going to do, dude. Unless they fucking, like, go the extra mile. Yeah. Like, they hand me a copy of the Watchtower. and Because, you know. Oh, it, God, it, yeah, I fucking hated that. It's thing. always the fucking Watchtower. Yeah. But unless they hand me one where it's fucking like, what the fuck? God damn. you on the cover. Did Todd McFarlane drew this? Like. <laughs> <laughs> the, it's just a full, like, fucking, like, crazy-ass, like, panel-for-panel, panel, like, Todd McFarlane comic. Like, what? It's like, dude, did you know, like, the fucking, like, final coming of Jesus is going to include Spawn? <laughs> <laughs> He's a DLC. <laughs> yeah. He shows up on a fucking motorcycle with Ghost Rider. Nice. <laughs> no. Ghost Rider is death. <laughs> but no, yeah, like, uh, just to help us win this, man. They're fucking <sighs> annoying. Like, hey, well, uh, we just want to drop this pamphlet off and we'll get out of here. But really quick, if you could open up that pamphlet up to page three. Yeah. And there's a little passage in there. Can you read that to me? No, mm-hmm. I can't read. Like, I can't fucking read. Thanks for pointing it out. Fuck you. <laughs> just slam the door. I love that one thing where people have, like, um, people, like, always, like, the fuck with the Latter-day Saints. Where, like, you can look up that. Uh, I forgot what verse it is, but obviously I don't know anything about the, uh, the, the Mormon Bible. But the, people always, like, the... If you like to, if you want to fuck with the Mormons, it always bring up the verse that talks about um, black people not being humans. Oh yeah, because uh, it's in there. Yeah, it's still in there. They never took it out. No, no. So whenever, not. so if you want to fuck with them, th- that makes them super nervous immediately, and they're just like, "Oh, the thing is, like, uh, uh, we, we 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 redacted that." Uh, no, you didn't. And, and, like, it's like, no, it's still in here. Yeah, that's the thing I don't get. Like, they have that passage in there, and it's not been moved or anything. There's a lot of black Mormons. 
Yeah. Like, why would they let you be a Mormon if they think you're evil? They didn't start accepting black Mormons until like the 70s, though. No, way before that, or way after that. What are you talking about? Was it the 80s? It was. I think it was around the 80s. I dude. think it was the 70s, dog. All right. I mean, I, it's because like with the timing, because around the time that's where like uh, they're that still was, racist as fuck. But wasn't you the know. 70s like near the end of segregation? No, that was like in the 50s, 60s. Okay. Yeah, that okay. was way before. Way before. I mean, there were still Jim Crow laws and everything up here until like the seventies. Yeah, I Pretty think. Fuck, do you think about know. it? I don't know Georgia uh, history too much. I don't know Georgia lore. Yeah, I don't know the lore of Georgia. <laughs> but now, yeah, I mean, I've had uh, like I told you about that. There's this old black couple that lived in my town uh, where I grew up, where we grew up. Yeah, and uh, they would go to the school during like Black History Month, mm-hmm. and they would talk about like Dahlonega, uh Back in the day, like when they first moved there, mm-hmm. and they're like, we weren't allowed it anywhere. Like we had to get our grocery stores. Uh, we had the we had to call ahead, let them know, and they'll let us in through the docks, and and we'll 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 just pick up our groceries and and leave. We weren't allowed to mingle. We weren't allowed to be around anyone. We had to take back roads. It was like Jesus, fuck, why would you live here? And yeah, for real. But it's like sometimes you get dumped somewhere, yeah. and you just have to fucking make by dog. Yeah. I kind of want to look into the. To the history there and see if it was a sundown. Well, think about it. We only ended we only ended up in fucking Georgia because of how much fucking like poultry plants around here is where our parents could go and work. Yeah, and that's pretty fucked. We led the charge, huh? We led the charge. Yeah, yeah. I remember there's a picture of my. uh, I could have been fucking still stuck in Florida, dog. Yeah, I would have been in Texas. Yeah, think about what kind of person you would have been. If I, st- if I stayed in Florida? You would have had, like, the Vipers on, mullet, everything. I would have been a fucking maniac, probably. Because yeah. I fucking... I don't, well, then again, I don't know. I mean, you, you can live in a fucking crazy, like, location and still turn out like a normal person. You know what I feel you would be? What? You'd be one of the Bayou people. Bayou people? Yeah, like, you move out with your white friends and go live on the Bayou somewhere. Hmm. Maybe. Be wearing, like, alligator boots that you killed yourself. I don't know. The fucking cousins that stayed in Florida all turned out to be fucking... Gangbanger wannabes and yeah, shit. Yeah, because they went to a shitty part of Florida too. Yeah, well, I mean, well, well, most of Florida is pretty shitty, but you know. What part of Florida were they from? I don't fucking remember. Nah, I don't want to say. I don't fucking remember. I'm not gonna say. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, they know who they are. Yeah, but um, just thinking about that too. Like when I lived in Houston, the for those two years, yeah, uh, with my wife, I was always like driving around. My cousin, I would drive around with my cousin. He was like, "Oh, there used to be a place there. Every family used to take you all the time, and we would go grocery shopping here and all this other stuff." Mm-hmm. I'm like, "Dude, that's crazy." Like, just seeing, like, where my family has gone and Think everything. about it. If you stayed in Houston, you probably would have been identical to your cousin. No, yeah. I would have been just like him. Dude. This is fucking weird. <laughs> like, we would have both been like, yeah, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I think a lot of people in our family think that we're similar to each other, but not really. I, I mean, mean the, the similarities we have is we listen to, like, not just Mexican music or rap. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we're, we're both nerds. Yeah, we're both nerds. We are both more open-minded. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. There's a lot of times where I, you know, like, like I love joking about being ignorant as fuck. Yeah. It's funny to me. But when you actually like talk to a family member who is ignorant yeah. as fuck, you're like, God damn it. Like, I didn't like this isn't fun anymore. Yeah. It isn't fun anymore when you bump into an actual family member that's just like, yeah, Donald Trump is coming back and he's going to put America where it needs to be. I'm like, no, shut up. That's not yeah. how that works. Or they just start spouting shit off about gay people or, or anything like that. It's just kind of like, dude, shut the fuck up. Dude, like, I don't know how many times I've had to have conversations with a fucking family member about just like, why do you care? Yeah. Why do you care so much? We have, at, at the same time, it would always be like, you know, there's people in our family that, that are, that, yeah. that, that are gay. And you're telling me that they don't deserve to be happy. They don't deserve to have rights. They don't deserve to do anything yeah. that a normal straight couple like, gets to do. That That's fucking yeah. absurd it's like that's your family you literally saw them as a fucking baby bloom into an adult yeah. and you're telling me not one point you're like that kid's fucking gay yeah like I, we all knew yeah everybody we all, knew we all fucking knew we all fucking yeah. knew everybody knew like you just know when somebody is different you yeah. just like n- you just know like in growing up seeing like some of our family members that yeah. you know that we we knew that you know like right off the bat we're like oh no they're gonna be gay yeah it's it's like, not, there but, wasn't anything that like happen to make them that way yeah but it's not just that man it's like you can pick up on a person's characteristics right away like well, i knew i knew what kids were gonna be gay what kids were gonna be incarcerated what yeah. kids were gonna just work simple humble jobs yeah and what kids were gonna be successful mm-hmm. like you just see it 
I didn't know what I where I fell because I was too much of a fucking like I don't fucking know where I'm going. I mean, both of us we were you know we had our fuck up moments and everything like that. Yeah, and, you know we grew from it. At least we're the like I mean we're tooting our own fucking horns and patting ourselves in the back. So we grew out of it a little. Mm-hmm. Like we still do stupid shit. We do this podcast. Yeah, and we talk about stupid shit. But I mean, we're a little bit too open on this show too. No, yeah, we are. I don't give a fuck. I know that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. so much of our family, the family who does listen to this, yeah. know a little bit too much about us. You know, and what I'm just saying, I, fucking Christmas time around, I'm gonna get like a fucking teacher that says like best pussy eater around. You there know, you I, so I'll wear it with pride. I'm waiting for that t-shirt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but, uh, your mom gets a t-shirt. <laughs> 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 but no, um, I want that cabbage patch back. No, it's just like, am I am I less of a family member to you because I talk openly about how I feel and my emotions and and my my beliefs, even though you talked about your beliefs? Yeah, I think yeah. that we are probably we're okay. I want to say that I'm probably one of the most emotionally mature people in our family because I I feel like I acknowledge. Yeah. When I'm fucking up more than most people and that I acknowledge that I can acknowledge other people's like feelings mm-hmm. a lot better than most cuz some people just do not get it. No. Some people just don't understand that they're overreacting and that they're being emotional and when <laughs> you tell them that that they're just like I'm not being fucking emotional, you're the one that's like you know like you know exactly what who <laughs> and what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know who you're there's talking a, about. There's a lot of people it's it's not just an isolated person. It's no. multiple people like who you've grown up with. It's in the blood. Where like they're they're they they've always been the person to gaslight a situation. Yeah. And not and they're always the one to get gaslit. And they have never realized, oh wait, people aren't making me uh be this person. I just am this person yeah. and I have failed to acknowledge that I am the issue. Yeah. So many people have not like, there's been so many times in my life where I have to sit my ass down and be like, I'm the asshole. I'm the asshole. Yeah. Like it, it's happened, you know, like, like I was like, even when I like uh, first started dating Hannah, I was so still emotionally just inept. Like mm-hmm. I did not know how to like, I would just bottle that shit up. Do the same thing our whole family does. Mm-hmm. Just, hey, it'll come out when you're 60. <laughs> You'll have a heart attack. It's <laughs> fine. You'll, our, you know, our family survived, you know, heart attack after heart attack. You're yeah. fine. And uh, she was the one who actually pointed out. I was like, hey, are you okay? And it was one time she, she, it was like after work. It was a really bad fucking day at work. And I just came home and I was just like, just. Pacing. Like, I was doing the thing pacing because I didn't know where to put all these emotions. Mm. And Hannah just walks in. She's like, hey, are you okay? Bro, I started crying. Like, just broke down crying. Yeah. And she's like, why did you tell me you're feeling this way? And I was like, because I never thought I could. Yeah. So, yeah. I know there was a time, there was a time where I can remember where I didn't know how to handle that situation. Yeah. I didn't know how to handle uh, feeling that overwhelming sense of emotion. That whenever it finally happened and I start bawling, I would get angry. Mm -hmm. And then I would be hit with the question, why are you angry? And I would have to like dig deep and be like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know why crying is making me angry. And then I realize, oh, it's this suppressed emotion. Mm -hmm. It's suppressed emotion. You're told your whole life that like a man is not supposed to cry. Yep. But it's completely normal for a man to lose his temper, which is not right. No, it's not. It's not right at all. Like, there was points in my life, like, I mean, I know, like, straight up, 100%, I would never hit someone angry like that. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I've punched a fucking hole in the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I we I did it at my buddy's apartment uh, at a party because uh, my ex at the time was just, like, not letting up. And mm-hmm. I didn't know where to put all the emotions. So I went upstairs to go use the restroom and like all of it just had to come out. And I just punched the hole right in the wall. Mm-hmm. I went back downstairs. I was like, I'm going to be back tomorrow with a patch kit. And I left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, yeah, I patched up the wall, fixed it, made it look new, repainted it. <laughs> yeah. But it's just like, 
I never that's been, not a healthy way. I've never been much of a hitter. I've always been a yeller. Like I fucking like. Oh yeah, I, I get too, so yeah. filled up with emotion that I have to let it out vocally, and yeah. I have to like speak out all my frustration, mm-hmm. even if it doesn't make sense. Even if I'm just like, uh, fucking like puking out like like just pure like word vomit. Like it doesn't make any fucking sense. I have to get out what I'm feeling. Yeah. And uh, typically it does help. It does help. But there's just some days, man. There's just some days where you're just like, why do I feel off? Just got to get a cry out. Yeah. Got to get that emotion out. Or you're just frustrated and you have to like, you have to vent to somebody. Mm -hmm. And uh, as men, as a men, as men in like a, in a, in a Latino family and a Mexican family, you're always told that that, that, that that's girl shit. That's mm-hmm. not shit that you're supposed to do. That, that, like you're They'll not get mocked and say they're going to put you in a dress or something. Well, think about it. Anytime yeah. that you, if, if you, if, if you remember when you're young and you ever had like a conversation with an older person about feeling a certain type of way about something, you know, they would just be like, you just got to pray about it. Yeah. Pray about it. Yeah. Or just forget about it. Move on. Yeah. Get back, get your ass back to work. Don't worry about it. I remember. You don't have time for this. I still have this crazy yeah. fucking memory, dude. I remember one time at my first job, the first job I ever had was working at a poultry plant. Right. Mm-hmm. And I remember, um, I was working there with one of our cousins and our cousin, um, was my ride home and he had to leave early that night. So I didn't have a ride home. So I had to ask my supervisor for a ride home. Cause I knew he lived like close by yeah, yeah. and he was just like, yeah, I'll go drop you off. Right. And then he had, uh, we were driving and I at the time was going through like one of my early, early years of like dealing with like a little bit of anxiety. Yeah. Right. But I didn't know what anxiety was. So I just always said that, ah, oh, for some reason I'm feeling nervous, you know, yeah. I just keep getting these weird feeling of nerves, you know? And I remember like one day I was like, um, uh, what, yeah, he was giving me a ride home and I kept like doing something with my hands, right? Mm-hmm. I guess because, like, my hands were feeling kind of numb and it was making me nervous and I was just, just kind of, like, rubbing them like this, right? The anxiety just yeah, building. Yeah, it's the anxiety building. And he was just like, you okay? He's like, yeah, I just, I'm feeling fucking, like, I don't know, like, do you get this feeling sometimes that you just feel, like, randomly nervous? Like, I don't know why I get I get like this. And he looked at me and he's just like, whatever that is, that isn't normal. He's like, oh. He's just like, yeah, you should not feel that way ever. Like, he literally said that to me. I was like, oh, okay. He says, like, whatever it is, it's in your head. Just leave it alone. He's like, I was like, okay. And then he dropped me off and then never spoke about it to him ever again. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then later on, I kind of realized, oh, wait, this guy is one of those dudes. He's one of those extremely emotionally vacant person who just doesn't, like, understand that, like, oh, this person is experiencing something from bottled up emotion, you know? And, uh. I think so many people, I, what I've been noticing a lot is that uh, a lot of, it could be like friends, family members, people who I've met through work, they all go through that transition period of like, they're out of high school, mm-hmm. they're finally adults, and all the chaos that was their lives in high school goes away, and then everything gets calm and quiet. Mm-hmm. And that's when the anxiety starts creeping in, and they're you know just what to do. and they just start like they start asking questions, man. And I, I I see it all the time. I see I get I get I have these conversations with so many young dudes that come up to me. He's just like, I don't know what's happening, man. I just get so fucking nervous. I get anxious as hell. I'd be feeling a certain type of way, and I'm just like, <laughs> you're just fucking with them. Oh, you're gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh God! He, he, I remember one time uh, <laughs> they come up to you sweating, say, "I think I think I'm having a heart attack." You are. <laughs> You're gonna die. You need to suck someone's penis right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just start zip, unzipping. <laughs> and they're just like, "What?" No, nah, I'm kidding. You got anxiety. Uh, unless you want. <laughs> I'm on break. <laughs> now we got thirty minutes. <laughs> I only need five. <laughs> but um. No, yeah, just the whole, like, it's just weird. Like, for me, it was, like, I, for, like, at work and stuff, like, growing, like, yeah, we all had the questions, like, asking the older people that. Mm-hmm. But at most of the jobs that I had, we were all, like, kind of the same age. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of, like, just asking each other, hey, what have you heard about this? Like, do you know what anxiety is? No. Hey, do you know what anxiety is? Yeah. What do you know about it? Yeah. 
It's like, what do I do with all this anger inside of me? Oh, you bottle up. I don't think that's the right qu- answer. What do you do with it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy because sometimes it doesn't work, man. And it sucks because, like, I know, like, a good example would be, like, I'm not going to name anybody, but, like, you know, a relative of somebody I care about um, was uh, going through something similar. He had graduated high school. He didn't really have anything planned after high school. He didn't want to go to college because he knew that he was going to go into debt. He didn't really know what career he wanted to go into. So he just started, like, working, you know, just a fucking, you know, like a restaurant job or or work like at an office job or something yeah. like that, you know? And then I uh, like not even like two years later becomes a fucking alcoholic. Yeah. Like no one even expected. Like they knew that like, Oh, he just turned 21. He's going to start drinking. And then that drinking turned into like an everyday habit. And then eventually it got to the point where they're like, Oh dude, this dude can't like keep a job anymore. Cause he keeps yeah. showing up wasted and they keep firing him for being wasted. And then you realize that, like, oh, this young kid is having, like, a mental crisis because he doesn't know how to express that he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know what he's going through. There's no more midlife crisis, I feel. Like, that has transformed into, like... uh, Quarter-life crises. What? Quarter-life crises. I see more people having a crisis in their 20s. Yeah, because it's, like, the state the world's in, the economy... You either go into debt or you don't, and you struggle because you can't get a job because everyone wants f- uh, someone with a bachelor's degree. Yeah. Or they want 20-plus years' experience for a starter entry job. Yeah, which is crazy when you yeah. think about it. Like, our family's generation, like, our, our parents' generation, mm-hmm. their crises didn't start until their 40s because they were always taught, we got to work, we got to work yeah. hard. So when we get to that point, we have something to show for it. Mm-hmm. And when they get to that point, they see what they've built up in that time and regardless if it is significant or insignificant they feel like this time had just like went by yeah. and all they did was work so they felt like god damn i've wasted so much of my life i feel like our generation gives less of a fuck about working and more about like going out and doing yeah. shit like it, it's this generation is learning how to they're relearning their own like histories Mm-hmm. A lot more people are interested in where their families come from. A lot more people are interested in the cultures now. They're just trying to learn because it's just kind of like you kind of saw with some of people, some of the people in our generation. Uh, they're, I mean, there's no other term for it. Whitewashed. Yeah. You forget. You don't like for us. It's like the no sabo kids. You don't speak Spanish. You know nothing. Like we barely know anything about Mexico. Yeah. Yeah, we know what we've read about and what we like care to learn about, but Yeah, we've been there, but we don't like yeah. we, we hadn't been there long enough to n- understand like, like the culture. Yeah, we don't understand who we are. Yeah. Yeah, and that's like a that's a thing inside of all of us that's kind of like, oh shit, like I know half of who I am. Just think about it. Like, we 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 are second generation Chicano. Mm-hmm. So our parents or half of our parents were born in the in the states, and yeah. they were the first generation. They're the ones that had to do like all the heavy lifting as far as learning English, mm-hmm. and that was tough for them. So whenever they see us not knowing Spanish, you know they feel a certain type of way about it. They're like, yeah. "We busted ass to learn English, and you guys can't even fucking like get your Spanish right." Yeah, that's like my mom. She didn't. She she always struggled with English, mm-hmm. and she had to like. She busted down and started learning English more when my little sister was born. Yeah. Because of all the disability stuff. Because they were over there rattling off things to both my mom and dad. And my dad, like, he's a guy, he could pick up on things, but, like, the big, long medical stuff, my dad's like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And, like, he doesn't understand it. Uh, And my mom, she does have some medical training from Mexico. Mm -hmm. So she was hearing, like, root words and being like, I know what this, but I don't understand it because it's in English. Yeah. So she went and, like, you know, I don't know what she did to learn English, like maybe just watching TV or being around people. That <laughs> she was English. watching ER, dog. No, yeah. She's George, George Clooney, Clooney, baby. <laughs> Teach me, George Clooney. <laughs> Dios mío. <laughs> Hi, Dios mío. <laughs> Turn that shit off. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I was watching shit, too. I love the ER. Uh, ER yeah. was shit. But no, it's just like, I think they're actually, that helped her out, too, because they say all the medical terms. Mm-hmm. And then she's able to see what it is. She's like, oh, okay. Okay. So, yeah. But um, even now, still to this day, she has a super thick accent. Yeah. Um. I remember in high school, uh, she didn't know she couldn't say he. She 
she couldn't make the he sound. Mm. So she would say she. Mm. So I was a girl in high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she is very, very fat. <laughs> she eats a lot. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. Uh, uh, I remember, um, I forgot who it was. It was some. Your mom speaks pretty good English. Yeah, my mom. My mom's English is pretty good. Yeah. Um, all, all of my, all she, she still has like the accent. Yeah, that is, side of the family's good in English. My mom's Spanish is really damn good, and and uh, her English so. is her English is pretty damn good too. Yeah. But like, I don't know. Like, I I do see my mom sometimes not be like a hundred percent on a Spanish word. An yeah. example would be like, you know, you're always hit with like a certain word of like. There's a certain word that you don't fucking know for sure, you know? Yeah. Like, 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 what's the Spanish word for, um... What was that one? For the... crawfish. Ooh. Yeah, what's the Spanish word for crawfish? Jaibita? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's the, you'll have, you have senses, like, yeah. you have, uh, you have moments like that where you're just like, oh, mom, like, try this crawfish. She's like, she's like, oh, okay. Like, and then she has to explain it to her husband who only knows Spanish and be yeah. like, this is... I'm surprised he hasn't tried to learn English. Huh? He... He came over here a little bit too late. I mean, you can still kind of learn. I mean, I, I, I feel like he... Well, he came over when he was like 18. Yeah, but I feel like maybe he can hear it and kind of get what they're saying. Or is he not there? He's just not there. Okay. I mean, the best way to put it is he has like a middle school education. Okay. Well, so, a lot of Hispanics that come over barely have. Yeah, it's because by the time, like, it, basically, yeah. I, I think a lot of what a, a lot of what happens with kids in Mexico is like sometimes parents can tell that like, oh yeah, you're not gonna be no fucking scholar, so well, it's not even you that. might as well get your ass to work before you, you know. But it's not even that half the time. Like most of the time, it's because I mean, in Mexico, you have to pay for school. Yeah. Yeah. Elementary school. I think like the first couple of years or dude, how years? bad would this fucking like whole country crumble if we had to pay for school, bro? God, it'd just be private, uh, like people teaching each other. No one would have. I feel at that point here in the U.S., there's enough people that are already. If they switched it overnight, like oh, school's not free anymore. But have you been seeing the TikTok shit what? about people talk about like oh, by the way. Like, most fucking eighth graders are reading at, like, a fucking fifth grade level. Oh, yeah, totally. And it's because, uh, what was it, uh, COVID. Yeah. Yeah, it fucked a lot of kids up. No, but some people say it's not even because of COVID. Some people just say, like, it's because kids don't give a fuck. Kids no, are just, don't. like. They're what? not reading. They're, it's the fucking tablet. It's not just that, but it's also, that like. pinche flappy bird. But it's, it's not just that, but it's also that whole mentality of, like, why do I have to learn this if I can just Google it? Yeah. Like I have my phone. I can just, like. Like, I don't know what the fucking yeah. War of 1812 was, but I can Google that shit real quick. I mean, it and... doesn't matter. You don't need to know what it is, but it's just, it's it's not about knowing what it is. It's just about um, being able to recall. It's, <laughs> it's you're, you're showing that you, you have the mental capacity to remember things so you can, you can talk about it or something like that. It's just your, your recall. So unless you're going to college to be a professor of the War of 1812, yeah, history, no one gives a fuck. History is important to learn. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, that's why you know all this fucking. Uh, what's that one school thing? The 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 one that the the schools are trying to do the online thing. I don't know what you're talking about. It's uh, it's that super like right wing like online teaching thing. They're not even a school. Uh, I don't even know. Uh, we talked about it, but it's like um, like Trump University. No, it's not. It's, it should be pretty much, but it's pretty much just saying like, oh, um. Slavery wasn't that bad. <laughs> like, we actually taught the slaves useful skills. Mm -hmm. And then when we freed them, uh, they used those skills to thrive. It's like, yeah. no, you kept them down for a long time after that. Just remember, kids, without slavery, we wouldn't have had hush puppies. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't have Aunt Jemima. <laughs> but like, no, it, and they talk about, like, uh, of course, people, like gender rights and stuff. Will people like, ever get that reference anymore now? Aunt Jemima? Yeah, because it's gone. It's still Aunt Jemima, but she's not on the thing anymore. No, it's not called Aunt Jemima anymore. What? It's called like something Mills, like something Mill. Dude, I can show you the box. Oh, I have bro, fuck that. Bring Aunt Jemima back. They they took her off the syrup and they took her off. Now they just named it after the actual company. I feel our fat asses talked about this. Yeah, we definitely talked yeah, about but this. It, yeah, it's because, Aunt Jemima. Of course we're going to talk about it. Yeah, no, she was, um, it, like people were pissed because uh, when they took her off, she was like one of the first black, like, celebrities 
Yeah, but she's like but she still was an interpretation of the character that is Mammy, and yeah. that's why people got mad about it because people were like, you know, did you they know, ask black people? You know, you know what stirred this up, right? White people, TikTok, of course, fucking TikTok, man. TikTok stirred it up because it was a bunch of black creators being like, "How come no one's ever done anything about Aunt Jemima?" Right? How come no one's done anything about Land of Lakes? Yeah. They finally did, but no one's done anything about Land of Lakes. We still have Uncle Ben. Yeah. You still on that fucking rice pack? Well, the, well, the whole thing is that this is what someone said. It's like Uncle Ben isn't a slave; he's a jazz man. <laughs> so therefore, it's not racist. But he lives in the black side of New Orleans, you know, because <laughs> he can't go to the white side. Well, I mean, every side of New Orleans is black. Yeah, now, huh? It's always has been, has it not? No, there's been white people there. I guess that is true, but those are usually the French. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's. Genesis Hakwe. I don't know. It's just, again, it's the whole, like, they talk about, like, you know, people are like, oh, critical race theory should be taught and everything. I'm like, yeah, cool. Teach kids about fucking slavery. Teach them about the oppression that happened and well, everything Well, the thing like that. about the whole critical race theory that was happening, it wasn't even about. No, it wasn't for the kids. It, it was for the teachers. Yeah, and yeah. that's what they were fucking crying about. They were yeah. crying about, like, oh, how dare they try to put it in school for the children. It's like, it, it has nothing to do with the children. Yeah. It has to do with the teachers. But at the same time, it's like. Again, you know why? Your teachers shouldn't be fucking racist. Yeah, you're whitewashing history. You're being like, oh, nothing happened between this time. I think we should start blackwashing history. We should. I think that would be way better. <laughs> what would, uh. Well, Bill Clinton's already black, so yeah. I don't know. Who, who invented electricity? Uh, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> he did a lot. <laughs> Light motherfucker. Just hit a switch. <laughs> ben Franklin is. Uh... Say, turn off the lights one more fucking time. <laughs> Say, turn off the lights one more fucking time. But no, like uh, again, like I'm saying, it's just like it's they're just trying to erase history and not teach these kids about like shit that's happened in the past. Mm. And, you know, I'm with the people that say, like, if you don't teach someone about the shit that happened in the past, it's going to happen again. Mm -hmm. Like, they're over there, like, already, like, not wanting to show kids about the Holocaust. Yeah. like I, It's a tough subject. I understand that. But I think kids should know that something like this <laughs> happened. Meanwhile, they have people on Rumble being taught about the Holocaust by Roseanne. And then. God. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, she still makes me laugh. She makes me yeah. laugh because how ridiculous! Like she will not let go of these fucking no, terrible go, bits. But like, at this point, like it's it's getting to the point where like I don't think these are bits, huh? Like a lot of shit that you're saying, a lot of people are like, these aren't bits anymore. I feel. Well, she shows up in a lot of comedy podcasts, and every comedy podcast she ends up on gets like fucking booted off of YouTube because yeah. she can't help herself but to say an anti-Semitic joke. But the thing is, she's Jewish, so she assumes she's going to get away with it, but it always backfires no, on her. it's not. Like, I know. I know. I don't... The best way I can put it is Roseanne, her biggest issue is she doesn't realize that she is the senile old woman. Yeah. And everyone around her loves her for what she's done for, like, comedy, but is failing to get to her when it comes to, like, hey, Roseanne, you're kind of, like, just making yourself look bad yeah. with every new thing that you do. I mean, it's kind of bad when you get kicked off of the fucking show that's named after you. Yeah. Yeah. They turned it They turned it around and gave it, like, a different name, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't Dude, know what the I, fuck they called it. I'm watching um the latest season of the the Righteous Gemstones. Shout out John Goodman, dude. I need He's, to watch that. Movie. I wouldn't even watch the show. I haven't seen it. It yet. is really entertaining because how fucking ridiculous it is, dude. Yeah. It really like makes you realize how fucked like mega churches actually are. Like obviously they exaggerate the craziness in it because it's you know it's a Danny McBride show yeah. or whatever. But John Goodman plays a hell of a fucking great character in it. He's still got such great acting chops. Yeah, John Goodman's amazing actor. He's a he's an amazing yeah. actor. He needs to fucking best like, Fred Flintstone I've ever seen. Yeah, he, yeah. I mean he nailed it. He yeah. just, just fucking nailed it. But um, and then uh, Rick Moranis was a uh, Barney. Oh yeah. Yeah. God, man, I fucking miss Rick Moranis. Yeah, he's not gonna come back though. No, he's not. I don't want him to come back. Yeah. Yeah, he's he did what he had to do. If he do. comes back, I'll deck him in the face. <laughs> You and that one guy in New York. <laughs> uh, welcome to New York, bitch. <laughs> I'm walking, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, shout out to all the boys that shrunk the kids. Yeah. And um, uh, I would love to get shrunk and dive into a Twinkie. <laughs> what? You're just gonna drown in filling. Yeah. That sounds like a fucking terrible time. 
Anyways, thanks again for listening to another episode of The Night Funk. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and at YouTube at The Night Funk Podcast. You can find me at my personal at Handful of Pedro. And also in the woods. <laughs> what the fuck happened over there, bro? On a Twinkie now. <laughs> You're still thinking about the Twinkie? <laughs> yeah, bro. Dude, I haven't had sugar in so long. <laughs> I have it like in bits. <laughs> Actually, uh, dude, I've been a fucking pig lately. Now that I do intermittent fasting, when I get hungry, I eat like a motherfucker, dude. I need to start working out again, but I, it's been so hard for me to fucking get a regimen together. I might need you to write me up a fucking like like workout yeah, plan again. Because I know the uh, last time you did it, it actually did help a lot. But all right. Anyways, besides that and health tips, all that, thank you again for listening to another episode of The Night Funk. New episodes every Friday. Stay tuned. We got more content coming out soon on fucking YouTube and TikTok. Just give us a minute. Please be patient because we are uh, very fat and slow. And it takes a long time for us to get this shit done, and especially me. Because, I've lost 30 pounds. Huh? I've lost 30 pounds. Oh, uh, I've probably gained those 30 pounds <laughs> that you lost. <laughs> no, actually, no. I think I'm on a down yeah. right now. But nonetheless, thanks again for listening, guys. Yeah, thank you. Here, every Friday. Don't forget. Mark it on your calendars. Listen. 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 Um, Sound like Navi. Listen. 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 Yeah. All right, bye. All right. All right. <laughs> shout out Shout out to all the guys with lower back pain. What? From heavy, from having a heavy dick. That does not, that doesn't cause back pain. Well, I guess you never experienced that pain. It would be I like have. a gut. Huh? It would be a gut. Nah. Yeah. It, it, when it's it's a swinging dog, it's like a kettlebell. It'll be your like glutes then. No. <laughs> I was laughing a second ago because I was thinking of uh, if they made a honey, I shrunk the kids, but Mexican. So instead of a Twinkie, it's a gancito. <laughs> but imagine a frozen gancito, so you're just freezing, but you're still eating the shit out of it. In the Mexican version, um, uh, Rick just fucking shrinks the kids and leaves. <laughs> <laughs>